Welcome to Chapter 40 of the Kinsman Die podcast, home of fantasy fiction based on Norse mythology that's written and read by me, Matt Bishop. In this podcast, I read my first novel, Kinsman Die, one chapter at a time. And with each episode, when it makes sense, I provide some commentary about the source materials I've referenced in the text. Today we're back with Frigg, Odin's wife and mother of Baldur and Hodor. Last time we were with her, she'd been brutally attacked by Odin. He was not himself at the time. He'd been fighting a spirit that came up from Urdebruna, the well of Urd, or Urder's well. And that same spirit, while it beat the crap out of Odin and drove him into a battle fury, took a few moments out of its day to speak directly with Frigg. In this chapter, Frigg deals with the aftermath of that encounter, and we meet some new Asir. So, let's get to it. Chapter 40. Frigg. The low rumble amid the sound of approaching voices meant one thing. Thor was coming. Frigg's hand tightened on Odin's knee. I'll handle him. Odin shook his head and hauled in a breath that crackled like dry leaves underfoot. Let me. She gently squeezed his hand and smiled up at him. You can barely move, let alone speak. He'll listen to me. Without Sleipnir's help, she'd never have gotten Odin to the table at Ithaval where the Jarls met. Ithaval was really just a place in the glade not far from Yggdrasil's trunk, where they'd set a large round table, open in the center, with a dozen chairs around it. Nor was it that far from where the Norns worked. Every midwinter and springtide, the Jarls of the Asir met and discussed the realm's affairs. But it was only at midwinter when they partook of Aegir's bounty. She patted Odin's knee and stood. His face, normally lean and lupine, was swollen, scalded, and covered in red welts. He looked like he'd been whipped. Beneath what remained of his blackened, wet armor and sodden clothes, his body was similarly injured. She didn't like the way he clutched his chest with one arm or the way his breath crackled and popped. He needed Balder. She didn't look that much better. Her light green dress was torn and stained with crushed grasses and crumbled tree bark. She'd ripped off one sleeve to daub Odin's wounds, then torn the other off as much for symmetry as to have more cloth handy. The Jarls would be upset at seeing her so disheveled, but it was her neck, and with light fingers she touched the heavy bruising that would anger them. But most would listen first. And once they saw Odin's state, they'd realize that something else was at work. Thor, however, would react first and listen later. She finger-combed her hair, braided it roughly, and draped it over one shoulder where it might partially hide her bruised neck. Then she tugged her feathery cloak forward to cover her goose-bumped arms and walked toward the pair of burly figures pushing out of the mist. Thor, red-bearded, tall, and broad-shouldered, looked at her with a smile spreading across his expressive face. Beside him, tear strode, black-bearded, black-eyed, serious. She stepped to one side to make Odin clearly visible. If Thor saw how injured his father was, maybe curiosity and concern would restrain his temper. Thor raised a hand in greeting. Oh, mother, Gnaw's message reached me just in... He'd gotten close enough to see the marks around her throat. Like clouds on a windy day, confusion flew across his face. Thor, thank Aegir. Have you seen Baldur? Your father needs him. Quickly. He laid hands on you? He growled the question, having leaped, of course, to that conclusion. He towered over her, a thunderstorm, beefy fists clenched and red beard bristling. Tyr looked more like a man calmly bracing for rough seas. His left hand rested on a sheathed knife that balanced the scabbard sword hanging from his right hip. The knife was hung to be drawn more easily with that hand the one Fenrir had not taken. Thor's hand dropped to Mjolnir's leather-wrapped grip. Thor, take a moment and listen, Tyr said. Your father's never laid hands on the Allmother before, and look at him. Hafrig can fight, but she couldn't do that to him. Thor's blue eyes flickered like stormy skies as he looked from her to his father. Frigg kept her voice calm and steady, an Alvar sooth woman approaching a wild stallion. Balder. We need Balder. Have you seen him, Thor? It must have helped, too, that Odin's crackling breath, dimly heard where they stood, changed to hacking coughs. 
She looked back and saw him dabbing bright blood from his lips and beard. Freki and Gary limped in from the mists, concern and pain evident even in their golden eyes. So, mother, what did happen? Thor asked, his brow clearing quicker than the sky after a summer storm. She wasn't his actual mother, but he called her that anyway. He disliked complicating things, especially familial bonds. And apparently, he decided to listen. Your father left early to speak with the Norns. When I arrived, he was fighting a spirit that had quickened the waters of Erdebruna. I don't know how long they fought, but you see what it did to him. His battle fury took him. Freki and Gary tried to make me leave, but I remained. And that's when he did this to you? He wasn't himself, Thor. His eyes glowed golden. Lost control, eh, father? He walked around her and squatted beside Odin's chair. I warned you about that when you took that thing into you. Odin's glare was evident, even through the pain. He tried to speak, but he convulsed with a cough, and all he produced was more bright blood. Frigg knelt beside him and daubed at his mouth with her former sleeve. His lips were blue, as if he were cold. She wadded up the remnants of her other sleeve and put it behind his neck. Did either of you see Balder on the way down? She repeated, hating the note of panic that had crept into her voice. Tyr shook his head as Thor rumbled a negative. I did, a sweet, soft voice replied. They're not far behind me, but maybe I can help, or what I carry with me can. Oh, thank Eger you're here, Idun, she said, rising and holding out a hand. May I? Of course, Idun said, smiling. With one slim hand, Idun flung back the leather cover of the saddlebag draped over her shoulder. She withdrew a single golden fruit twice as big as her palm. She laughed as a white moth lit upon it. Frigg smiled her thanks, snatched it, and sank back to Odin's side. Her knife flashed a piece from the fruit. Odin, bite into this, she urged. Suck the juices, at least. Just get some of it into you, quickly. Odin coughed again as he pushed himself up a little straighter. She halved the slice she'd cut and pressed it into his open mouth. Color crept back into his face, the tautness in his shoulders eased. He chewed once, twice, then swallowed. She fed him the other half. Several ragged breaths later, he groaned and shifted. His ribs rasped against one another. The sound raised the hair on her arms. Then he sagged back against the chair with a sigh, eyelids fluttering. That's better, Frigg. Thank you. His lips were no longer blue, and the red wheels and blisters covering his face and hands had faded. Even the swelling began to recede. She smiled and stroked the side of his face. He covered her hand with his own. I'll be all right. He sat up a bit straighter, with less obvious pain, and spoke in a stronger voice. And thank you, Adun, both for your timely arrival and the fruits you brought. He coughed again, deep and scratchy, and spat it out. I'll take my place now, I think, he said, gripping the arms of the chair and forcing himself upright. Sweat beaded on his brow. I really think you should wait until Balder gets here, Frigg said, frowning, even as she moved to help him. Well, folks, that was chapter 40 of Kinsman Die. I hope you enjoyed it. I apologize for my complete lack of vocal range and talent. With every chapter I read, I have greater admiration for voice actors. In this chapter, we were with Frigg after the fight with the water spirit. She's tended to her husband, Odin, who was badly wounded and injured in that fight. We met Thor and Tyr as they arrived for the winter meeting of the Jarls at Ithaval. Tyr is the one-handed Asir. As alluded to here, he lost his hand to the giant wolf Fenrir. More on that later. Thor is the son of Odin, and, both in myth and in my books, a mysterious woman, probably a Jotun, named Jord. That name, Jord, means Earth in Old Norse. In the myths, there is almost always tension between Odin and Thor, which I have carried into my books. Idun then arrives with the fruit of Yggdrasil. We have seen this fruit before in several of the chapters, and in the myths they're called golden apples, or that's usually how they're translated. But the actual word in Old Norse, according to Zemak, does not necessarily mean apple. I've chosen to describe them as apples because that's basically what everybody is used to. I also call them Aegir's bounty. In the myths, Aegir is a Jotun who is typically associated with brewing and the sea, at least the more benevolent aspects of the seas. His name means ocean. His wife, Ran, which means robber, 
one who steals, is associated with the dangerous aspects of the ocean. The ocean gives life and can take it, and as people so accustomed to living by the seas, I'd imagine that the Norse people understood that dichotomy very well. Next week, we're back with Odin. Before then, if you have the time and inclination, please rate or review the podcast. And if you're so inclined, please shoot me an email at mentbishopwrites at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, I'm going to read from the Havamal, the sayings of the High One. And I'll be reading from Bellows and Larrington. If you recall from last week, there was a flip-flop in the stanzas thanks to the differences in the source manuscripts and how different translators and or editors have made different choices in which stanzas came first. Bellows, verse 40. None so free with gifts or food have I found that gladly he took not a gift, nor one who so widely scattered his wealth that of recompense hatred he had. Larrington, verse 39. I never found a generous man, nor one so unstingy with food, that he wouldn't accept what was given, or one so open-handed with possessions that he disliked a gift when offered. Thanks for listening.